Welcome to our quiz video series dedicated to exploring the practical application of biblical truths in everyday life. Today's quiz is all about faith challenges, overcoming doubt and fear. Test your knowledge and understanding of how to navigate through seasons of uncertainty and anxiety by applying timeless principles found in God's Word. Get ready to engage with thought-provoking questions, real-life scenarios, and practical strategies for overcoming doubt and fear. Are you up for the challenge? Like, consider subscribing, and share your score in the comments. Let's grow in faith together. These quizzes can further your Bible study journey. Let's dive in and see how well you know the keys to growing stronger in faith. Share this video with friends and family so they can join us on this empowering quiz journey. Question 1. How does the Bible describe the nature of faith? A. Blind belief without evidence. B. A fleeting emotion. C. Confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. D. Superficial adherence to religious rituals. The answer is C. Confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is like a deep-rooted confidence in the promises of God, even when we can't see them coming true. It's about trusting in His goodness and believing that He will fulfill His word, no matter what. Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Question 2. What is the primary source of doubt and fear according to biblical teachings? A. The opinions of others. P. Personal insecurities. C. Trusting in God's promises. D. Negative life experiences. The answer is D, negative life experiences. Sometimes, negative experiences like loss, failure, or disappointment can shake our faith and fill us with doubt and fear. It's natural to feel this way when things don't go as planned, but we must remember that God is with us even in our darkest moments. Psalm 23, verse 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Question 3. What did Jesus say to his disciples when they were overcome with fear during a storm at sea? A. You should have been more prepared. B. Do not be afraid. Just have faith. C. Fear is a natural reaction. It's okay to be afraid. T. Let's turn back. The storm is too strong. The answer is B. Do not be afraid just have faith. When Jesus calmed the storm, he showed his disciples that faith is stronger than fear. He encouraged them to trust him completely, knowing that he has power over every situation. Mark 4, verse 40, he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Question 4. According to Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is a. Knowing all the answers. b. Blindly following tradition. c being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. T. Merely a mental exercise. The answer is C. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith involves being confident and certain about the promises of God, even when they are not yet visible. Faith isn't just wishful thinking. It's about believing in His faithfulness and holding on to hope no matter what. Question 5. What does the Bible say about the relationship between fear and love? A. Fear and love cannot coexist. B. Love drives out fear. C. Fear is an expression of love. D. Love is irrelevant to overcoming fear. The answer is B. Love drives out fear. Perfect love casts out fear because when we truly understand God's love for us, we have no reason to be afraid. His love gives us courage and confidence to face whatever hurt, pain, or struggle. 1 John 4 verse 18 reminds us, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Question 6. What happened when Peter walked on water toward Jesus but then began to doubt? A. Jesus scolded Peter for his lack of faith. B. 
Peter immediately sank into the water. C. Jesus helped Peter back into the boat. T. Peter's faith grew stronger. The answer is P. Peter immediately sank into the water. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the storm, he began to sink. This teaches us that when we let fear overwhelm us, we lose sight of God's power and provision. Matthew 14 verse 30, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Question 7. How does the Bible encourage believers to overcome fear? A. By avoiding challenging situations. B. By seeking comfort in material possessions. C. By trusting in God's promises and leaning on his strength. T. By relying solely on personal willpower. The answer is C. By trusting in God's promises and leaning on his strength. Instead of relying on ourselves or our possessions, we're encouraged to trust in God's promises and lean on his strength. He is our refuge and fortress, our ever-present help in times of trouble. Isaiah 41, verse 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Question 8. What is the antidote to doubt according to James 1 verse 6? A. Ignoring doubt and pretending it doesn't exist. B. Asking for wisdom. C. Avoiding difficult questions. D. Succumbing to doubt and giving up on faith. The answer is P. Asking for wisdom. When we face doubt, asking God for wisdom can help us overcome it. He promises to give generously to all who ask in faith, guiding us on the right path. James 1 verse 6, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Question 9. What does Psalm 56 verse 3 encourage us to do when we are afraid? A. Trust in our own abilities. B. Rely on the opinions of others. C. Put our trust in God. D. Worry incessantly about the future. The answer is C. Put our trust in God. Instead of relying on ourselves or seeking validation from others, we're encouraged to put our trust in God. He is our rock and our salvation, our refuge and strength in times of trouble. Psalm 56 verse 3 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Question 10. How does Romans 8.31 reassure believers facing challenges? A. If God is for us, who can be against us? P. We are alone in our struggles. C. God helps those who help themselves. D. Challenges are signs of God's disapproval. The answer is A. If God is for us, who can be against us? Knowing that God is on our side gives us confidence to face any challenge. No matter what we may encounter, His love and power are greater than anything that could come against us. Romans 8 verse 31 What, then, shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Question 11 What does Jesus teach about worry and anxiety in Matthew 6 verse 25 to 34? A. Worrying is a sign of strength. B. Anxiety is unavoidable and should be embraced. C. Trusting in God's provision and seeking His kingdom first alleviates worry. T. Worrying is a necessary part of life. The answer is C. Trusting in God's provision and seeking His kingdom first alleviates worry. Jesus teaches us that worry and anxiety can be overcome by prioritizing our trust in God's provision and seeking His kingdom above all else. When we focus on God's faithfulness and His promises, we find peace in the midst of life's uncertainties. Matthew 6 25 34 Jesus reassures His disciples not to worry about their basic needs but to seek first God's kingdom and righteousness, trusting that He will provide all they need. Question 12 According to 1 John 4, verse 18, what does perfect love do to fear? A. Intensifies fear. 
B. Magnifies fear. C. Casts out fear. T. Has no impact on fear. The answer is C. Casts out fear. Perfect love, which is the love of God, has the power to cast out fear from our hearts. When we experience and understand the depth of God's love for us, it dispels all fear and instills confidence and security in His care. 1 John 4 verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Question 13. How does the Bible describe the peace that comes from trusting in God in Philippians 4 verse 7? A. A temporary feeling. B. A peace that surpasses understanding. C. A fleeting emotion. T. A peace that depends on external circumstances. The answer is B. A peace that surpasses understanding. The peace that comes from trusting in God transcends human understanding. It's a deep and abiding peace that guards our hearts and minds, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Philippians 4 verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Question 14. What is the role of prayer in overcoming fear and doubt according to Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7? A. Prayer has no effect on fear and doubt. B. Prayer is a sign of weakness. C. Prayer leads to peace and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. D. Prayer is ineffective unless accompanied by action. The answer is C. Prayer leads to peace and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is a powerful tool for overcoming fear and doubt. When we bring our worries and concerns to God in prayer, He grants us peace that surpasses understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Question 15. How does Isaiah 41 verse 10 encourage believers facing fear? A. By reminding them of their inadequacies. B. By promising that they will never experience fear. C. By encouraging reliance on human strength. D. By assuring them of God's presence, strength, and help. The answer is D. By assuring them of God's presence, strength, and help. Isaiah 41 verse 10 encourages believers facing fear by reminding us of God's constant presence, His strength to uphold us, and His help in times of trouble. Isaiah 41 verse 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Question 16. What did Jesus say to Jairus when he received news of his daughter's death in Mark 5 verse 36? A. Your daughter will never live again. B. Don't be afraid. Just believe. C. It's too late for miracles. D. You should have sought medical help sooner. The answer is B. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Jesus encourages Jairus not to fear but to have faith in him demonstrating that faith is the antidote to fear and doubt. By trusting in Jesus, we find courage to face even the most challenging circumstances. Mark 5 verse 36, ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, just believe. Question 17. According to Psalm 23 verse 4, what does God's presence provide in times of fear? A. Wealth and prosperity. P. Discomfort. C. Comfort and security. T. Despair. The answer is C. Comfort and security. Psalm 23 verse 4 assures believers that even in the darkest valleys of life, God's presence provides comfort and security. He guides and protects us, giving us courage to overcome fear. Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Question 18. What does Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 instruct believers to do when faced with uncertainty? A. Rely on their own understanding. B. Lean on human wisdom. C. Trust in the Lord with all their hearts and acknowledge Him in all their ways. D. Doubt God's intentions and decisions. The answer is C. Trust in the Lord with all their hearts and acknowledge Him in all their ways. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 instructs believers to place their full trust in the Lord, rather than relying on their own understanding or human wisdom. By acknowledging God in all aspects of life, He directs our paths and removes uncertainty. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Question 19 how does 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 describe the spirit God has given us? A. One of fear and timidity. B. One of boldness and confidence. C. One of confusion and doubt. D. One of weakness and despair. The answer is B. One of boldness and confidence. As believers, we can face challenges with courage knowing that God has equipped us with his spirit. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Question 20. What did Jesus say to the disciples when they were terrified by his appearance on the water in Matthew 14 verse 27? A. It's just a hallucination. Don't be afraid. B. Get over your fear and act tough. C. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. T. Run away and hide. The answer is C. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Jesus' words remind us that even in life's storms, his presence and words bring comfort and courage. Jesus encouraged the disciples to be courageous. Even in challenging circumstances, faith and trust in him can provide strength. By saying it is I, Jesus revealed his divine identity. His presence brings peace and security. Jesus consistently taught his followers not to fear. Trusting in him dispels fear and anxiety. Matthew 14 verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Question 21. What does Psalm 34 verse 4 encourage believers to do when they cry out to the Lord? A. Wait in silence for an answer. B. Expect immediate solutions to their problems. C. Seek the Lord and he will deliver them from all their fears. D. Doubt God's ability to intervene. The answer is C. Seek the Lord and he will deliver them from all their fears. Psalm 34 verse 4 reminds us that when we cry out to the Lord in our times of fear and distress, he promises to deliver us. It teaches us to turn to God in prayer and trust in his faithfulness to bring us comfort and peace. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Question 22. How does Jesus respond to the man who asks him to heal his son in Mark 9 verse 23 to 24, A. Jesus rebukes the man for his lack of faith. B. Jesus tells the man that healing is impossible. C. Jesus reassures the man that all things are possible for those who believe. D. Jesus ignores the man's request. The answer is C. Jesus reassures the man that all things are possible for those who believe. Jesus reassures the man that all things are possible for those who believe. In Mark 9 verse 23 to 24, Jesus emphasizes the importance of faith in experiencing God's miraculous power. He encourages the man to believe and trust in him, highlighting the significance of unwavering faith in overcoming challenges. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Question 23. According to Romans 10 verse 17, what is faith built upon? A. Personal opinions. B. Human wisdom. C. Wishful thinking. T. Hearing the message about Christ. The 
The answer is D. Hearing the message about Christ. Romans 10 verse 17 underscores the foundational role of hearing the message about Christ in building and strengthening our faith. It highlights the importance of engaging with God's Word and allowing it to shape and transform our beliefs. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. Question 24. How does Psalm 27 verse 1 encourage believers facing fear? A. By reminding them of their weaknesses. B. By urging them to rely on their own strength. C. By declaring the Lord as their light, salvation, and stronghold. D. By instilling fear of the unknown. The answer is C. By declaring the Lord as their light, salvation, and stronghold. Psalm 27 verse 1 offers encouragement to believers facing fear by reminding them of the Lord's constant presence and protection. It teaches us to find our strength and security in God alone, acknowledging Him as our ultimate source of light, salvation, and refuge. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Question 25. What does Hebrews 11 verse 6 teach about pleasing God? A. Pleasing God is irrelevant to the believer's life. B. Pleasing God requires faith. C. Pleasing God is impossible. T. Pleasing God requires perfect obedience. The answer is P. Pleasing God requires faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 highlights the crucial significance of faith in our relationship with God. It emphasizes the necessity of trusting in God's character and promises, illustrating that genuine faith is fundamental for fostering a meaningful connection with Him. And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. We have come to the end of our quiz on faith challenges, overcoming doubt and fear. We hope you've gained valuable insights into applying biblical principles to your everyday life. Remember, overcoming doubt and fear is not just about knowing the right answers, but actively living out your faith in God's promises. Take what you've learned today and put it into practice, trusting in God's strength and guidance every step of the way. Keep seeking wisdom from His Word, and may you find peace and courage in the midst of life's challenges. Thank you for joining us on this journey of growth and discovery. Don't forget to like, comment on your scores, share, and subscribe to our channel for more empowering content and quizzes that inspire faith and resilience. Until next time, may you walk boldly in the assurance of God's love and grace.